apparently we have 15 seconds to enjoy my handsomeness. Um, let me know how that goes. So, uh, I love you, Boyd. I love you, Boyd. All right, so I'm Clinton Wolf. I'm going to be talking about uh, different terms that we use in the DevOps community. I know I'm on. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, buddy. <laughs> you burned my time. No. Anyway, so not only do I do this, but I, uh, so I'm a consultant, but also in my spare time, I maintain a website called DevOpsDictionary.com. It's a wiki. Go there. Contribute. But let's talk about words. Goat. You may have heard this term in reference to people. Um, there's a great podcast called The Goat Farm. Go listen to it. It's great. Um, but a goat is something that is uh, multifunctional, tends to ignore uh, boundaries within an organization. It's a good thing. Um, if you ever want to call someone this, like with an adjective, you can use the word caprine. Isn't that great? Could you please be more caprine in your work? Be more goat-like. All right, pets and cattle. So pets and cattle, you may have heard this in reference to uh, servers. So a, a server that is a pet is one that you lovingly maintain. If there's a problem on it, you go in and you fix it. You try to have it be long-lived, big uptime, that sort of thing. Cattle, no, no, no. Easy to, to create, easy to destroy. You have a lot of automation around it, that sort of thing. If you have hundreds and hundreds of these things, it's not practical to treat them as pets, treat them as cattle. It's a whole mindset thing. And when you move to the cloud, Good. Off, off we go. Canaries. <laughs> canaries. Uh, canaries comes from deployment, deployment testing. The idea here is that when you do a deployment, you would deploy to a small group of servers and see how it goes. And if it goes well, then you deploy to the rest. The term comes from uh, the old, old time miners who would bring in an actual live canary into coal mines and the little bird's tiny lungs it would die if it encountered any like methane or bad mine gas or anything like that. It would die first, and so you knew that all the humans had to get out. Coffee ops. So this doesn't actually mean drinking a whole bunch of coffee and doing your work. That's normal anyway. We don't need a word for that. Instead, coffee ops refers to a social movement. It's a meetup that was founded by Jennifer Davis, a name you'll probably hear a lot. She's a force of nature in the DevOps community. Uh, there is one in Santa Clara, there's one in Seattle, there's a few others. Um, if, you're, if you don't have one locally, I highly encourage you to start one. They are wonderful, just people getting together and talking over coffee about DevOps. Hug Ops. This is a meme that you may have seen, uh, especially in the chef community and some others, but the idea here is that whenever something bad happens, be it a professional badness or a personal badness or anything like that, we should share empathy for each other and treat each other like human beings. You know, if you find out that somebody's dog just died, maybe don't just, you know, ream them over some problem that they had. Don't ream them over anything at work anyway. We should be blameless about these things. But hug ops means we should treat, treat each other like human beings and be good to each other because stress causes errors. Stress makes everybody horrible. Chat ops. Chat ops is where you integrate all of your tools with... Um, your chat system, so it could be Slack or something like that. You might be able to issue commands to your build system, say, go build this thing, and then it responds back five minutes later with, the build was awesome, or the build was terrible, and it's all your fault, and here's this, and that sort of thing. You can get graphs out of it, that sort of thing. Really, the integrations are up to you. Lots of people are, are having a wonderful experience with this. The, the biggest impact of it is that you have all of your tools actions and your people actions in one channel and one log. Snowflake. So Snowflake, what does this mean? If you go into a machine and you make a manual change to fix something on a machine that is normally under automation, you have just snowflaked that machine and you are a bad person. <laughs> you should, in theory, go back and change the automation to make it work this way. But if you have 100 machines and one is different, that one special machine is called a special unique snowflake. I don't know if it's a Fight Club reference or not, but it seems to be to me. Anyway, anti-fragile, very quickly. Uh, anti-fragile is the property of a system that somehow gets more resilient the more you damage it. I think it's a fascinating concept, and I'm not smart enough to come up with an example. So this is only a 15-second slide, and we're going to move on. <laughs> Cams. <laughs> Cams. Now, I had this great spiel about this one, and then I realized John was going to be our, our keynote speaker, and he talked about it. So good for him. So I'm not really going to talk about cams. Instead, I'm going to talk about yak shaving. Where did the term yak shaving come from? It came from a 1993 episode of Ren and Stimpy, obviously. <laughs> from there, it went in the year 2000 to the MIT Media Lab, where it became known as any time that you are working on a problem and you keep having to recursively solve another problem in order to solve your original problem. The one that comes to my mind is trying to install Nokogiri. There's lots of other things like it. Yes, you keep going into a new dependency, and it's new and horrible and horrible. Yeah, 
So this is why things like Omnibus were created. All right, that's it. There's a link on the screen there if you want to uh, get something that actually has like attributions to all these terms. Also, go to devopsdictionary.com, sign up, start contributing. Somebody needs to contribute besides me and my coworkers. Thank you. Well done, man.